Hey everyone, in this video we'll be running through an example where we find the design member capacity uh, for a steel frame such as this. We're going to be finding the capacities of our columns and we're going to actually be finding the effective lengths ourselves manually and then from that we'll be able to so solve for our design member capacity. So in this example what we're after is the design member capacities for these two columns A and B. The steel frame is uh, configured such that all the webs are in plane of the frame. Now what this means is that for the columns and the beams if you actually remove the flanges and only look at the web the web will be in plane of the frame. So since the frame is lying flat on say this piece of paper our web will also be lying flat on this piece of paper. So this is just the webs and if you add the flange back you'll be able to see what the I beams actually look like from the side and yeah just remember that in plane means that the web will be in the same plane all right so that's this one checked so rigid beam to column connections means that whenever the beam joins up with a column it has a rigid connection and you'll need that to find BE uh, and the uh, foundation pins so the foundation connection between the columns are pin jointed and you also need that for BE. All columns used are 310 UB 46.2. All beams used are 250 UB 37.3. So all the beams are horizontal, or the columns are vertical. There's also a note here where it says that the member level bracing, there's a member level bracing existing such that the KE or effective length is the fully effective L. Uh, 